Welcome to the information session for volunteers for this year's Royal Adelaide show to be held from the 1st of September till the 10th of September. So my name's Julie Quimby. I'm the volunteer manager here at the Royal Adelaide show. You'll be receiving emails from both myself and my trusty right-hand man sidekick, Mr. John Blanco. John is the volunteer coordinator. He is a volunteer uh, here twice a fortnight to help us out with um, administering and delivering the program. So um, yes, look out for both myself and John in email correspondence over the course of the year. So here's a few quotes from some people who have been volunteering with us for many years. We put out a survey at the end of last year's show to all our volunteers. 101 people replied to that survey and 101 out of 101 people said they would be back again for this year. So that to us is a really good indicator of how well accepted this program is. So before we get on to the roles for the Royal Adelaide Show, let's talk a little bit about what the show is. The show is run by the Royal Agricultural and Horticultural Society of South Australia. We've been around for 178 years. Uh, we're the second oldest entity in the state, just behind the South Australian Police. So we're older than the state government, for example. We are certainly know what we're doing. We've been around promoting excellence in agriculture and horticulture for all this time, feeding the colony and making sure that SA produce is first and foremost on the national and international map. Over half a million people come through the gates each year. It's the most popular show in the country based on population. Uh, Size-wise, it's only second behind the Sydney show. We're also the next biggest show in the country for competitions. So we have over 60 sections in competitions. Um, and within that, we have over 30, uh, 33,000 entries right across from things such as cookery, photography, ewes and lambs, pigs, grains and fodder, uh, arts and technology, all sorts of things. There is a competition for everyone here at the Royal Adelaide Show. We also, uh, as you know, specialise in rides, food, fun, entertainment. So that's our carnival section of the show. Something you might not know is that the Royal Adelaide Show is run by a non-profit organisation. So we have two foundations here at the Society. One is an educational foundation and one is an archive foundation. The Archives Foundation runs the Archives Museum here and we collect, preserve and restore the rural and agricultural heritage of South Australia. If you haven't been into the museum, I do encourage you to go in there during showtime. It's quite a little treasure trove. The other foundation is the Education Foundation. So we give out scholarships, bursaries and prizes to the next generation of agricultural producers and farmers promoting excellence in primary industry once again. So a bit of a marketing update for you, um, what the show will look like. In 2016, uh, we, did, we had a fantastic show. We won five awards in the International Association of Fairs and Expositions Awards. This is a um, organization that's based in the United States, but looks after all the county fairs and agricultural shows right across the globe. So we won awards for our show magazine, our Explorers Educational Agricultural Trail. We won awards for our Yellow Brick Road show bag, which is a trail based show bag once again. We also won an award for our new Flurio Milk sponsorship here at the showground. And because of those four awards, we then won the overall agricultural program award. So we had the best agricultural program in the world, pretty much, which is fantastic as far as shows and expositions go. We also did some market research at the end of last year. We looked at research into the show magazine and how we can improve readers' experience and make it uh, easy for people to navigate their way around the showground using the show magazine, getting excited and planning their day, finding what they want to find. We also did some research with uh, groups of over 60s, so some seniors research, and one thing that came out of that was we are now identifying ways in which we can make it easier for uh, older people to navigate their way around the showground. So people that might be taking grandchildren with them, people that might have uh, mobility restrictions and things like that. So that's something that we're looking on improving this year as well. 
Okay, so returning in 2017 is the wonderful Explorers Trail, which launched last year. This replaces the Farm Walk, and it takes place in various agricultural areas across the showground, from the Dairy Cattle Pavilion to Golden Grains uh, to the Farmyard Nursery, an educational-based trail. So participants learn about both the animals and the particular feature breeds which are exhibited at the show. We're also returning with our midweek entertainment program which was launched last year. So on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday last year we had specialised children's entertainment uh, come into the show to increase that midweek entertainment and spread out um, the attendance rate. We found that it's super busy on weekends and maybe not such a great experience for young children who can't do well, deal well with big crowds. So putting on some specialised entertainment midweek um, and try and boosting those numbers in the middle of the week and easing some pressure on the weekends. The Ride Against Suicide will be back again this year. You may have noticed uh, people wearing yellow t-shirts for Are You OK Day um, in the Thursday of last year's show. Uh, this year the show does not fall on Are You OK Day, but we're still having a Ride Against Suicide where participants um, uh, we'll do a ride from uh, a location in South Australia and finish their ride around the main arena here at the showground promoting healthy mental health um, and looking after each other in the community. Also returning this year is our very successful Australian International Drone Championships. Uh, this is something that happens every night on the main arena at 8 o'clock. There are races and uh, semi-finals ending with the Australian final on the Saturday night, the last Saturday night of the show, and the international final on the last night of the show, the Sunday night. So that's quite uh, exciting to have back again this year. New for 2017, uh, we're bringing back Tinker Taylor. So in 2014, Tinker Taylor uh, had a stage show on Goida, and it was exceptionally well received. So Tinker Taylor Fashion Maker has now turned into Tinker Taylor Toy Shop, which will be um, a musical extravaganza full of music and dance and um, acrobatics on the Goida stage, and we're encouraging everyone to check that show out. Uh, Yellow Brick Road is being revamped this year. We're taking it back to its food produce roots. So more of a food-based bag than it has been in recent years. The Beast is one of our new carnival rides for 2017. So it'll be hard to miss. It's a 45-meter pendulum that will swing back and forth across the top of what seems like the whole showground. If you're a thrill seeker, The Beast is the ride to try in 2017. Also, uh, the Northwest show layout so the entire carnival area will have a new look and new layout this year so keep an eye out for that one. Something else we're very excited to announce is our own show mascot. So for many years we've had a mascot parade here at the showground but we've never had our own mascot to help lead them. So at the moment we have a mascot being stitched together um, and he'll be ready for show launch coming up very soon and this is what our new mascot looks like. We think he's a lot of fun. We find that uh, this character is a great combination of our agricultural roots, with his head being a grain crop, and then a mix of our carnival as well, right down to a squeaky bow tie and carnival shoes. So look out for this guy during showtime. Okay, as mentioned before, the Royal Adelaide Show is one of the biggest shows in the country for competitions, and entries are now open. So all these categories here, plus many more, as we mentioned, there are over 60 sections you can compete in. These entries are open and we're ready and waiting to take uh, any applicants. So get on board, check out the show.com.au and follow the link to competitions and you'll read all about it there. This year, as every year, we have feature breed competitions, so specialisations uh, in which we educate the public more on these particular breeds and they rotate uh, throughout the years, so never the same one two years in a row. Uh, they'll be interesting to check out. These ones will feature um, in our Explorers Trail as well, so keep an eye out for these. Okay, moving on to the volunteer program itself. So the volunteer program in the um, 
blue shirt capacity, wearing the blue polo shirts that uh, our volunteers are famous for, has been going for seven years now. All our roles are customer service based, so they certainly require a friendly face, great smile, willing to um, be receptive and talk to strangers and people, answer lots of questions. Um, it has a great team atmosphere. That's something else that came out of the research survey we did at the end of last year's volunteer program. Um, everyone felt very well supported by the team structure, so this is something we're continuing with. You will certainly make new friends, and I've put down here that you'll learn new skills, but I should also add that this is an opportunity for you to share your skills with others. We have a very wide range of people who participate in this program. So from 18 year old students right through to retirees um, and people in their 80s and 90s. So it's great to be able to share the skills you have um, with others across different areas of the show. Okay, <clears throat> so now we get into the fun part, what you uh, receive for your assistance with us. So this year we have an all new show uniform. This is because we need to change the logo that's on the uniform. They'll still be the same blue polo shirts, but the logo will look different. So everyone will receive a new polo shirt, a new hat, and a lanyard. There are still optional jackets available to purchase. Those forms will go out in a few months time once we have the quotes available. These jackets are warm, uh, thick, weatherproof, with a big hood on them. Um, they have an embroidered logo on them. If you do already have one of our jackets with the old logo on it, we will give you a badge, a specially designed badge, which is shaped to fit over the top of the old logo, which you can just slide on and wear during showtime. If you need a car park pass during this year's show, uh, please request one before the 7th of June. The car park is over at Netball Stadium and there is a shuttle bus which is a free shuttle bus that runs every 20 minutes or so between the show and the Netball Stadium car park. But you must request this car park if you require one. You will also receive a meal voucher for each shift that you work. And I've popped down here that there are plenty of training opportunities you can attend as well. Now these are not compulsory besides the mandatory induction, which I'll talk about a little later, but there are other opportunities involved, such as learning how to use the scanners and the kiosks and so forth. So keep an eye out for those opportunities. Okay, tickets. Fantastic. So if you are a casual volunteer, and by that we mean someone who commits three to five days of working at the show, then you will receive a single entry pass for each day you volunteer at the show. That's three to five days. If you are what we call a full-time volunteer, then you've gone that extra step of commitment and are willing to volunteer for six to eight days of the show. For giving that extra bit, we will give you a 10-day show pass. This can be scanned in and out as often as you like during showtime. We will also give you a single extra adult pass, which you can give to anyone you wish and they can come in and enjoy the show with you. These are our vision, mission and values. We really stand by these. This was signed off by our team leaders at last year's team leader workshop. It's really how we want people to turn up every day at showtime. We want teamwork, enthusiasm, respect, sincerity, commitment and improvement. These vision, mission and values will be available in your volunteer handbook closer to showtime once you are accepted onto the volunteer program. And now for the roles. These roles are all available in the volunteer role description booklet. This is available for download off the website and also available for postage or you can pick one up by coming into the into the show office which is the secretary's office here at the showground. So there are a few pre-show roles. One is assistant to the team and one is competitions volunteer. These roles start in August. They're exceptionally busy roles. Assistant to the team doesn't necessarily have a set job description. This person will be helping all members of the Royal Adelaide show team get bits and pieces finished and ready for showtime. It may require running around to different areas of the showgrounds and delivering pamphlets or boxes or tickets. 
It may also require sorting and collating different bits of paperwork or badges or various other items which need to be ready by showtime. The competitions volunteers help the competitions and sponsorship team get all the prizes ready for those uh, 62 plus categories of competitions that happen each year. You'll be sorting through many sashes, many prizes, many medallions and many trophies. These need to be scanned in and entered into the computer to make sure the right prize goes to the right place at the showground. These roles require someone who is self-sufficient and a self-starter. It is absolute chaos here in August and uh, we certainly request that the person who is in this role is confident to get about their role on their own. Okay, now moving into the showtime roles. Volunteer Office Assistant. This person will meet everyone on the volunteer team. You'll be signing in and signing out volunteers at our show office. You'll be answering the phone and taking messages, particularly from those volunteers who are unable to come to a shift or need to advise us that they'll be late for their shift. You need to liaise with team leaders and volunteer coordinators and must be comfortable using a two-way radio. There will be training on this if you require. You also need to help make sure that the exhibitor kitchen is kept clean and stocked. This is right by the volunteer office. The admin and events support role will assist the sales team who look after the exhibitors at the show. You'll be looking after their reception and getting digital files in order ready for them to use. You may also be required to help out with functions and exhibitor inquiries. This role, once again, is a, is a little bit fluid in its job description as each, may, may, each day may be different. From the archive support role. The Archives Museum is a wonderful place which preserves the agricultural and rural history of South Australia. This role is an invigilation type role, so you'll need to ensure that people coming into the archives take no photos or have no food or drink on them. You'll also be uh, required to answer some questions about the archive. Marilyn Ward, our archivist, will make sure that you're well equipped with answers. She will also be on hand most times to help answer any questions you are unable to. Bank SA Explorers Attendant. This is supporting the Explorers Trail, which runs across the agricultural sections of the showground. You will need to stamp the trail magazine provided by show patrons and give them a clue to the puzzle. Once patrons have finished their puzzle, they receive a prize at the end of the Explorers Trail. You will need to help participants find where the next stop is and also answer any general questions about the Royal Adelaide Show. <clears throat> Break Squad Assistant. This role is as varied as it is interesting. Each day there are a number of positions which may need to be filled due to illnesses or absence and some people may need breaks if they have a long or double shift. This role fulfills that spot. You must be happy to go anywhere and everywhere and do anything. None of the roles are complicated, but they do require a friendly smile. These two roles I've popped together because they're very similar. The cellar door and the olive oil assistants. Both are tasting based exhibitions that are set up in the taste essay pavilion. You'll need to set up and pack down each tasting as directed by the area liaison. You may also need to spruik the tasting sessions if there is still space at the sessions and more people can come inside. Commercial Exhibitor and Showbag Information Desk Attendants. Once more, I've popped these two roles together because they are very similar. You'll be based at an information desk where the public come to you when they can't find what they're looking for within the halls. You'll be given booklets and folders which contain all the information you need. For the show bag haul, people may be looking for a particular bag and you'll need to guide them to the right desk. In the commercial exhibitors hall, people may be looking for a particular seller or a particular item. You'll have information on where to find both these things. It should be noted that these halls are extremely noisy. If you wear a cochlear implant or a hearing aid that doesn't do well with background noise, these might not be the roles for you. 
commercial exhibitor photographer. This person needs to go around to all the different exhibitor stands across the showground and take photos of the stands. They need to take photos of the top where the name is set as well as what the exhibit looked like that year. These are reference points for our sales team so that next year if a commercial exhibitor calls up and wants to do something different with their stand they can refer to what's been done in the past. It's advised that although there is no set time for this role to begin it is really best to get started early before the halls get very busy. These halls include Jubilee, Goida, Pet Centre, Taste SA and a few others. Derby Room Attendant The Derby Room is where our lost and found is, is located. It is also where our competition ribbons get distributed. People in the Derby Room need to log items lost and found on our specially designed database system. This was designed by a volunteer last year and is an exceptionally easy to use program. You need to have accuracy and you need to make sure that all the details are put down so we can get in contact with people if items are found. There always needs to be two people in the Derby Room because valuables need to be run over to the police station. You must be comfortable using a computer, using a telephone and using a two-way radio. This role also gets very busy in the evenings. Entry Gate Welcome Host This role requires you to be at or near the show entry gates. You need to help people affix lost person wristbands onto children or vulnerable people. These wristbands should have a phone number written on them. We also encourage uh, guardians to take a photo of their child or vulnerable people on the day of the event so that the police and anyone looking for the lost person knows exactly what that person is wearing and other details. You will also need to answer any general show questions and ease the pressure off of the show kiosks. There will be a number of show maps available for you to store in your waste bags and give out to any families who may ask for one. This role is really important. You are the first happy face people see when they come into the show. Make sure you wear a great big smile. Goida Stage Area Assistant This role is officially new for 2017. Last year when we introduced the Midweek Children's Entertainment, we found the Goida Stage Area was very difficult during the kids shows due to the number of prams, small children and families trying to access the seats in front of the Goida stage. The people who are in this role will in need to encourage people to fill seats from the middle of the rows outwards. They'll also need to assist with removing chairs so that prams and wheelchairs can get in to see the stage show. A number of sponsor leaflets will need to be placed on the seats and then picked up after show and replaced. Again, this area is extremely noisy and you must be confident that you can hear in a noisy environment to take on this role. Mascot Assistant. This role is also new for 2017. You must be the eyes and the ears of the performer inside the mascot suit. You will remain with the performer at all times and you also need to help the performer get in and out of the costume. You must be very comfortable being in the public eye as there will be many cameras on the mascot as he moves around the showground. This role will now also assist with the daily mascot parade. The daily mascot parade previously had been assisted by the administration assistant. Quilting and Tech Centre Attendance I've put the quilting and the Tech Centre roles together because they are very similar. You need to assist the exhibition team in ensuring that the public don't touch items which are not meant to be touched or engaged with. You also need to ensure that there is no food or drink near the exhibits. Many general questions about the show will need to be answered. These roles are not yet set in the exact times they will be ready. The quilting exhibition team and the tech centre team need to let us know when they have special events on and they require extra assistance from our volunteer team. 
So stay tuned if you're interested in working in these roles. Rooftop Tour Guide. This is a tour which shows off the environmental credentials of the Royal Adelaide Showground. We have an environmental trail that many people don't yet know about. This role is given a script which will be available prior to show for you to learn. You need to take patrons safely and, and effectively up a set of staircases along a catwalk and onto the rooftop of the Goida Pavilion. There is a viewing platform there where you can see all of the show's uh, solar panels and you can also view our beehives. You need to be able to work effectively with your other tour guides, both from the volunteer program and the volunteers from the Adelaide Bee Sanctuary who will be talking about the beehives. Runner. This role is very busy in the mornings. It is essential that you are comfortable using an earpiece radio. The runner runs tickets, documents, pamphlets and other collateral all across the showground. You will be responding to calls from the secretary's office as well as from the volunteer team. You must be comfortable walking many kilometres in each of your shifts and you must be comfortable using the radio. Show kiosk attendants. Show kiosks are the one-stop shop for show patrons. In 2016 we introduced split roles whereby there was a contract staff member to take care of all financial transactions within the show kiosk and a volunteer team member to take care of everything else. Once again this year, the contract staff member will sell the yellow brick road bags and also sell the return tickets where someone who was already in the showground can buy a new ticket for $10 to get in at a later date. Volunteers in this show kiosk will scan and redeem family value packs child value packs and discount ride coupons. Redeemed tickets need to be sorted into the correct bins to make it easy and efficient for the show kiosk coordinator to reconcile at the end of the day. You must be comfortable using a radio and you must get on with your contract staff in the kiosk. It is also the main port of call for information for show patrons. There will be folders and laminated sheets inside the kiosk to assist you in answering questions from the show patrons, such as, when does the woodcutting competition start? Where is the nearest ATM? And where can I buy XYZ? Stagehand at the Pet Center. The stagehand assists the stage manager in the Pet Center with any requests. Again, this is not a set role description, but more a help out as needed basis. Things may include changing the sets between performances, adjusting the sound and lighting, and assisting the general public with seating. Yellow Brick Road Attendant. Volunteers assisting on the Yellow Brick Road stalls will be stamping patrons' Yellow Brick Road map and giving them the item relating to that stop. You will also need to direct them to where the next Yellow Brick Road stop is located at the showground. Yellow Brick Road bags can be purchased from show kiosks, so make sure you know where the nearest one is. At least three Yellow Brick Road stands will be operated by volunteers this year, although in the works there is possibly room for a fourth. So that's all the roles and now let's get on to some more important information about applying or reapplying to become a show volunteer in 2017. Uniform. Although we do give you the blue polo shirt, the hat and the lanyard, it is up to you to wear whatever you feel is appropriate on the lower half. Comfortable shoes are a must. There is nothing worse than getting a blister the first day of show, knowing that you've got several more shifts to go. Sneakers are appropriate as long as they are neat and clean. Two examples here are given in white and black. You must always be neat and tidy and well presented. Make sure you do your hair and your teeth before coming to the show. Skirts and shorts are allowed 
but they must cover the thigh area. Jeans are fine as long as there are no rips or stains and we do not allow truck pants or leggings to go with the show uniform. On the screen here are some examples of what we see as appropriate show uniform. Availability. Please make sure you keep your availability updated on our show volunteer portal, which is called myvolunteer.com. It is really important that if you know you need to change a shift, you change it as soon as possible and let us know. Otherwise, rostering can be really difficult for over 200 volunteers. It should also be noted that evening shifts are appreciated. We found last year that we struggled every day to fill the positions that are on between 5 p.m. and 8 p.m. Remember that with your show ticket, you can come in at any time of day and stay and enjoy the show prior to your shift. You can then finish your shift take your meal voucher and get dinner and watch the show fireworks. It's a great way to spend the evening. Here are some key dates for you to remember. It might be worthwhile taking a screenshot of these key dates. For new applicants, you must get your online application in by the 31st of May. This is on myvolunteerpage.com. If you're struggling to find the right application form there, please go to our website theshow.com.au and follow the links on the volunteers page. Interviews for new applicants will be held on Monday the 5th and Tuesday the 6th of June. You will then be advised the following week whether or not you have been accepted into the volunteer program for 2017. Roles and shifts are open for all volunteers on the 12th of June. Please don't look for any roles prior because they won't be ready for application. We need to make sure that we get all the shift times correct, all the locations correct, and all the location supervisors sorted out before the shifts go live for you to apply for. After the 12th of June, you are welcome to sign up for any roles that take your interest on myvolunteerpage.com. You must finish selecting your roles by the 7th of August. Between the 7th of August and the 18th of August, I will be sorting out everyone's roster. When you sign up for a role, you are not confirmed until you receive your roster between the 7th and the 18th of August. Please be patient with us during this time. If you need to make any changes to your roster, for example, say if your work roster changes after the 7th of August, please email or telephone me to let me know you need to make a change. If you make a change directly on myvolunteerpage.com, it won't be picked up and then there will be a gap in the roster. We also request that all paperwork is in by the 7th of August. This includes your volunteer agreement for 2017, your car park request form if you want one, and your national police clearance if you require a new one for 2017. Everybody who is on the volunteer program must attend an annual mandatory induction. This year they will be held on the 25th and 26th of August. One session will be in the daytime and another will be set in the evening for those who are unable to attend during work hours. This session covers all the work health and safety requirements which everybody on showground, from a volunteer to a staff member to the CEO, must do annually. Optional kiosk training is available on the 30th of August. This is not compulsory, but it will allow you to practice with the scanners which will be in the kiosks. These scanners are used for redeeming the family and child value packs and the ride discount, discount coupon vouchers. Then it will be showtime from the 1st to the 10th of September. Please also mark in your diary the 21st of October. This is our thank you fun day for all the volunteers who took part in the 2017 show. It will be held once again 
in the pool bar, which faces onto the main arena and will be a fun sausage sizzle affair. So some details for new applicants now. You must complete your online application form. This can be done at myvolunteerpage.com. You must book for an interview, which will be held on either Monday the 5th or Tuesday the 6th of June. You can do this by calling me or emailing me on the address below. After the 12th of June, and you have been accepted into the volunteer program, you can sign up for shifts on myvolunteerpage.com. You will then need to check your roster between the 7th and 18th of August. This will be sent out to you via email, but will also be available on myvolunteerpage.com after the 18th of August. To book an interview, there are several options available. They run from 7.30 in the morning until 4 p.m. in the evening. There are three interviewees available at all times. Information for returning volunteers. You must fill out this year's health questions and emergency contact details on myvolunteerpage.com. These details get wiped clean every year and must be updated annually, so I am confident they are current and correct. You also need to complete this year's volunteer agreement and send it back to us before the 7th of August. You need to renew your national police clearance if you did not do one last year. We require the national police clearance get redone every two years. We also invite you to join our volunteer Facebook group. Please email me if you are on Facebook and are currently a volunteer who would like to join this group. For returning volunteers, there are some other opportunities available before the show. One is our brand new World's Environment Fair held here at the showground on the 3rd and 4th of June. This is aimed at primary and high school students. There is also our annual Science Alive weekend held on the 5th and 6th of August. This is also aimed at school students. Roles are not yet set, but they will involve manning the information desks, running the rooftop tours, and assisting with pass-outs and stamp-ins. I will be sending out a call for um, applications of interest closer to the dates of these fairs. And that's it. That's all the information you need at this stage for this year's Royal Adelaide Show. You can get in touch with me, Julie Quimby, by emailing volunteer at adelaideshowground.com.au or you can telephone by calling the main desk on 8210 5211. Thank you very much and we hope to see you at the show.